Ciao, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. It is still beautiful, beautiful summertime here. It is August right now, and I got the question on how to sneak some more greens into your diet, ways to eat greens other than salads. And I think the Mediterranean diet does great with different types of recipes that cook greens and sneak in greens. So that's kind of was my goal today with these three different delicious, very much of course, still summertime inspired because I'm not rushing any of the seasons to end. I'm highlighting three different types of greens today. I think they are the, probably the most popular in America. I feel like everyone knows and sees in their grocery store all the time. Of course, spinach. So we will be making eggplant rollatini. It's really cook down that spinach because so much turns into so little and mix it in in a filling. I chose to kind of make it Greek vibes, like American Greek vibes is what I mean by all means. Remember, nothing about my recipes are really authentic in the sense that I always have to put a spin on it, choose different flavors because I can never keep things as they are. I gotta spice it up, I gotta be zestful. That's what I gotta do. Recipe number two is a delicious kale and zucchini fritter with a preserved lemon yogurt sauce to top it off. And lastly, I know it's a salad and I just preference this video starting off by saying, oh, greens other than a salad but we're talking about a panzanella. So panzanella is a summertime staple for me. I made one last summer in a cooking video and I'm making it once again in this summer, but I am choosing to do a lots of arugula. Arugula is my favorite green, nice and bitter. That isn't actually good cooked. It is the best way to eat arugula is really fresh. Kale and spinach are good fresh and cooked, but definitely arugula is great fresh. And so I wanted to highlight how delicious it is fresh. We're gonna top that summer salad off with a very special vinaigrette. We're gonna do some pinchetta off right up and take that beautiful, beautiful fat from the pinchetta and make a delicious vinaigrette that's gonna soak in with all those bright, colorful, amazing summer vegetables into that delicious toasted bread and you have a basically clean out your fridge kind of meal. So those are the three different recipes that I'm going for today to really highlight greens in all of their glory. So let's hop into recipe number one. So for the first recipe, we're starting off with the rollatini. I feel like eggplant is a very underrated vegetable here in America. I love eggplant. I would venture to say eggplant's like one of my top three favorite vegetables. Cut off the top and the bottom and I'm cutting it about a fourth of inch thick. We really, really want these pretty thin, about as thin as you can handle cutting it. I chose to do eggplant. You could also do zucchini. It just is a little bit harder to do because it's so much smaller, but zucchini would also work if you cut it similar to this where you cut it long ways. We're gonna par bake it first. I have the oven preheating to 425 degrees right now. And we're gonna par bake this for about three or four minutes. So that way, cause as you can see, it's not super rollable and just baking it a little bit will help with the texture, the flavor, and make it much easy to roll up with this incredible filling. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a baking sheet and pour some liquid gold all over the baking sheet. Spread it around nice and evenly with your best kitchen utensils. And then if you have scraps of eggplant that aren't like these perfect rollable guys, I would just cube them up and saute them in some oil and they turn out delicious. Or once these big guys are done roasting, you can add your random scraps to uh, the pan and roast them with some seasonings. And if you see, eggplant are super fragile. So if you get an eggplant and don't cook it right away, it might start bruising up a little bit. It's still perfectly fine, just cut away those bruises. Or it might deceive you. Like this one here is kind of has like all these random ugliness to it and you're thinking like, oh, that's probably not a good eggplant. Turns out it's kind of not true. It's still pretty good on the inside even if it doesn't look too beautiful on the outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop the first tray into the oven right now. Prepping a second tray. All right, and the second tray is all done. While we wait on the eggplant to cook, this is something you could do in the meantime, but of course I already have it prepped. However, before I start talking about the filling, I forgot a crucial ingredient. This is not a Caroline recipe video without a good handful of mistakes. So I forgot a beaten egg into, into the ricotta feta mixture filling situation. So I have it prepped here. I know you're so sick of ricotta and feta together. I feel like I just put those two together in my last recipe video. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. <laughs> I can't resist it. So I have here some delicious ricotta, whole milk always, some briny, salty, incredible feta. I threw in uh, some delicious marinated Greek olives. 
kind of in the mix, a lot of them, because I'm an olive gal. I do love me some olives. And then I also threw in some sauteed spinach. So it's a lot of spinach and it cooks down a ton. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the egg, which I should have thrown in yesterday, but I forgot. Why Mediterranean food is so delicious is because every ingredient is so wonderful and important and delicious. So it's like I took whole milk, really high quality ricotta and Greek imported feta. Those Greek olives already had this like red wine vinegar marinated goodness to them. And so we only have like five or six ingredients going in here, plus, you know, the eggplant and the sauce, but everything has so much flavor that we're using that you can use minimal ingredients and, but the ingredients are so incredible that they just, they have flavor. So this is what we're kind of looking for. It's just starting to steam my face away. <laughs> it's starting to get lightly brown on the edges. As you can see, I'm gonna to touch it even though I recommend not doing that. You can see that it fully rolls. It's not breaking. It's like the perfect amount of like heated, but it's not so overcooked that we're gonna lose all of its texture and goodness when we go to cook it again for a second time. So while I let the eggplant cool um, just a little bit so I can handle it and manage it a little bit better, let's talk about the sauce. You could use just a tomato sauce, you could. But like I said, I kind of did this weird thing where I envisioned a Greek salad minus the cucumbers and broke it down into this rollatini. So that's where I saw the feta of the Greek salad, I put it in here, the olives of the Greek salad, I put it in here, the greens of a Greek salad, sometimes Greek salads do have greens. I kind of put that spinach in here. And then that ricotta is the that thing that holds this all together for the filling. So Greek, I'm, I'm mixing a little Greek and Italian. And then I have some fire roasted uh, tomatoes and bell peppers. I wanted to go for something kind of smoky because I feel like we have something so salty going on and I wanted something to kind of counteract that. And there's the sweetness of the bell peppers and the tomatoes that we're used to. There's like a little bit of that. I wanted to amp up even more flavor with some smoked paprika and then getting those fire roasted canned tomatoes and fire roasted canned bell peppers. I want to cut corners where I can. If I can get them canned and save my time from cooking up tomatoes and cooking those bell peppers, that's a great thing, but if I'm gonna get them canned, I might as well amp up the flavor as well. So that's why I got chose the fire roasted for a more smoky flavor. And then to top everything off, I'm gonna throw on some Parmesan. Again, mixing cultures here. We got a little bit of Parmigiano, some Italian cheese with some feta, which is Greek cheese. But I wanted a little bit of golden brown on top. If you wanted to add more cheese, you could do some mozzarella on top. You could find a really beautiful Greek melting cheese. I think Caseri is one of the best melty Greek cheeses. So we're gonna take a nice and cooled eggplant, slightly cooled, it's still kind of warm. You wanna get it, it's still kind of warm. We're gonna take probably a tablespoon or so with the olives and the spinach and the feta cheese. Roll it up and it's perfect and it's ready to go and it's incredible. That's my favorite part of cooking. I just love it. I just love really hand making things. Like people love home cooked meals, handmade things. And so that's why I kind of love when you just get to like have fun with it and be creative with it. So if you don't like olives, you can totally leave out olives. If you want to use like a different green, you can saute some kale. If you don't like feta, you could use some mozzarella and Parmesan in the mix. If you are like any type of cheese fan, like maybe goat cheese would be really yummy. What I love about so many of the recipes that I create for you guys, and it's always a goal of mine, is to create blank canvases. So I'm giving you this idea of rollatini, right? But you can make the filling whatever you want. You could use, like I said, eggplant or zucchini. You could use a different kind of tomato sauce. You can use whatever sauce you like for these delicious things <laughs> to bake them in. Throw in some like pancetta in there if you wanted to. As you can see, this recipe is so easy. And now I'm going in with some of the fire roasted red pepper and tomato sauce. So I'm just gonna put a nice thick layer, smear it all on the bottom, and then just fill the pan with the rollatini and they fit so perfectly. I'm gonna go in with the biggest guys first and it looks like I made two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. So about 16 to 18 rollatini is what you can probably get with, depending on how big your eggplant is, with that ricotta feta mixture that I made. I honestly have never made rollatini before <laughs> and so I'm glad we're doing it for the first time together <laughs> and just kind of smear it all over the top. And now I have the perfect amount of sauce left for a pasta dish. So throw in some pasta water, some parmigiano, and you have a fire roasted red pepper tomato pasta sauce, just ready to go.
You could also throw this on top of grains. You could throw this on a pizza. This would be so good on a pizza. And then to top everything off, just a little bit of grated Parmigiano Reggiano on top. Maybe I should do a little bit more. No, I think that's good. I was gonna grate some more. Should I grate some more? Let's just, we're gonna grate some more on top because I love some cheese. Parmigiano does a great job getting golden brown and crusty. So it's a great cheese for topping when you're baking. And you would never know there's like five cups of spinach in here. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and pop this into the oven until it is bubbly and golden brown. You know me, just when it looks right, I know it's ready. <laughs> Gorgeous rollatini has come out of the oven. I did end up broiling it for a few minutes just for the golden brown heavenly goodness on top. And by golden brown, golden dark brown. But we're keeping the fire roasted theme. So I'm gonna go in and get three. So this is going to be very saucy. This is a very saucy recipe. So it's not gonna hold together really thick like lasagna. Here we go. Oh yeah. Incredible. Oh, baby. It's still piping hot, but it's time to taste test this incredible eggplant rollatini with feta, olives, spinach, and a fire roasted red pepper tomato sauce. You guys. I've made so many recipe videos that I really think I need to like read a thesaurus on the word delicious. You guys, this is so, this is so good. So easy, so good. I created this recipe in my head and I could never imagine that it was gonna turn out this incredible. This healthy, balanced, you get so much protein from the ricotta and the feta and those olives have so many nutrients for you. It's packed with spinach and I've yet to taste anything related to spinach. So if you don't even like the taste of spinach, you wouldn't even know. This sauce is so good. There's no just eating a little bite of this and then putting it in tubware. I am eating this entire serving, even though I have two other recipes to literally film. I'm behind schedule, but mm, mm, please make this. All right, so this was the vegetarian. Let's move on to the vegan. This recipe, I'm pulling out my favorite and beautiful caraway pan. I'm gonna go ahead and set that on the stove top because this recipe will come together so quickly. I want to always give you guys variety. So in the first recipe, I went for a vegetarian and gluten-free theme. For this recipe, it is not only gluten-free, but it's also vegan, which by the way, what is this recipe, Caroline? It's a kale and zucchini fritter. So I have the shredded zucchini here and so much water is just gonna pour right out because I salted the shredded zucchini and it just makes so much water come out. That's why a lot of vegetables, sometimes you don't want to salt too early on in the cooking process because it will just release so much water and kind of ruin maybe the recipe that you're working with. All right, that should be about good. You could use a dish towel to uh, squeeze all of it out but I'm just using paper towels. Quite a lot of water I'm gonna go ahead and dump. We wanna be able to control the water content in this recipe. So back into the bowl is going the zucchini. Make sure not to get any paper towel in the recipe. <laughs> I made this vegan because I know I have so many different people who follow with different diets and I wanna cater to everybody because that's modern Mediterranean living. You can eat anything on the Mediterranean diet. I'm going in with a medley of fresh herbs. So I have beautiful scallions, which is gonna amp up the flavor incredibly in this uh, dish. They are also known as green onions and they just give a beautiful onion flavor but also very herbaceous and kind of floral and they're not super strong. So I have three scallions, a big bunch of basil and a big bunch of mint. If you're not a fan of one of those herbs in place of mint or basil, you could do parsley, you could do cilantro, any other kind of more leafy, not so woodsy, but more leafy um, herb. And then I'm also gonna tear up about two cups of kale straight in. This is gonna cook down once it hits the pan and the heat. If it's being eaten raw, you really gotta massage it and kind of work on it. And I promise it turns very delicious. It can be so delicious in a salad. It's such a sturdy, sturdy leafy green. You'll see me using a lot of kale in the winter time. I'll have coming out with even more recipes for how to make kale super delicious, but it's, it's sturdy. So it needs to be broken down because it, A, it's so much easier to digest when you break down kale. So I'm kind of ripping it up into tiny, 
little pieces here. And now for the dry ingredients, I'm going in with chickpea flour, and then I went in with a little bit of nutritional yeast, and salt, pepper, and lastly, some ground chia seeds. Ground chia seeds make for an egg substitute, also known as flax eggs too. You could do either or. And so what the ground chia seeds are gonna do once they sit with the water, so you're gonna have to let this sit for about you know, five or six minutes, but it's gonna act as like a binder that a egg normally would. If you don't like chia seeds and you're not a uh, vegan, you can go ahead and use two eggs stirred in with the flour mixture. It's not really like this big batter. It's a very like a vegetable heavy, somewhat you can see that it somewhat kind of comes together, but it's not like it's like a dough. Barely this kind of batter to hold them together, but really the star is the vegetables and this is once again another super blake canvas if you don't want to use kale don't use kale <laughs> even though i'm making a video on how to use more greens if you want to leave out the kale go ahead and leave it out the zucchini are delicious on their own another thing you could use is the yellow summer squash they have so many varieties of summer squash at your farmer's markets. I already know, like my farmer's market is loaded with different kinds of fun squash. But you could also add corn into this mixture. If you bought some beautiful summer corn and cut it off the cob, you can throw some corn kernels in here. You could also add, what other things, maybe grated potatoes if you wanted and just use up what you got. Perfect. I'm gonna let this sit for about five minutes and go ahead and heat up the pan. herby fritters. I'm not gonna lie, I've been eating them as I made them. Mm. This sauce is so good. Preserved lemon and yogurt sauce. I use coconut yogurt because it's so tangy. Coconut actually pairs really well with a lot of these flavors. And because I wanted to keep it vegan. If you wanna use Lebanon Greek yogurt or skur, or some kind of really thick tangy yogurt is key here because I wanted something super creamy and zingy and refreshing to really complement the herby kale scallion goodness. Mm. This sauce on its own can be very strong and overpowering, like just preserved lemon, olive oil, honey, and uh, coconut yogurt. <laughs> I was just thinking of the word. But paired together with something like these super herby zucchini and kale packed flavors go really, really well together. It's perfection. I'm so full, but we have to move on to recipe number three. All right, third and final recipe is a warm panzanella. I created this recipe for a bunch of reasons. One, classic BLT. Who doesn't love a BLT sandwich? I feel like that's a summer staple. Two, if you're like me, you go to the farmer's market or your local bakery and you get a loaf of bread and then you don't finish it and you have to freeze like the end pieces or just two or three slices, and sometimes you're just like, I wanna clean out all this random bread that I have. Make croutons, toast them. I bought two different types of bread for my last video to make a sandwich, an epic summer sandwich. And one of the types of bread I didn't use, and it kind of was just staring at me in the fridge. I was like, hey, great idea. Let's go ahead and uh, toast it on up and create some fun croutons. The perfect recipe for stale bread. And I cut my bread this time, but if you wanna tear it, it's also very rustic and fun. And then we're gonna go straight in with the warm dressing for this panzanella. So I had some pancetta left over from a carbonara that I made last month. So I threw it into the pan, got it super, super crispy, threw some really small diced shallots, cut the heat because I kind of want a little bit of crunch from the shallots. I'm not trying to really overcook those shallots. I kind of just want to get them warm and heated and everything like that. Apple cider vinegar, Dijon mustard, maple syrup, and that pinchetta fat. If you have bacon, you can use that too. And it's just very meaty. And before anyone comes for me, yes, guanciale is technically the cheek of the pig, and that's what's used for carbonara. The pork belly is the pinchetta. I don't like 
bunch all day because I like these really meaty, mm, meaty pieces. So I'm going in with the warm dressing straight onto that bread. This dressing I just finished making. Oh no. Oh yeah. If you don't want to use maple syrup, you can use honey too. Or even like brown sugar would be really good. Or even regular cane sugar. Sugar, sugar. I just use sugar, truthfully, in all my recipes for texture and um, flavor. So I want that maple amber flavor. Next, I'm going in with the beautiful summer gems. Some nice, gorgeous tomatoes going right in. And you wanna make sure to keep the tomatoes intact with all the seeds and the insides because as this sits, whether it's an hour, two hours, the next day, those seeds start to loosen and give off their beautiful tomato juices, which helps soften the bread. And I know, I'm sorry, I had to go in with my hand. I can't help myself. I have some beautiful fresh corn that I got at a local farmer here in Columbus. Corn is totally optional. It just sounded super delicious for this recipe. <laughs> I, I can't, I know. Caroline, stop it, herbs. Every single recipe has so much herbs. That's Mediterranean cooking. If you're not like me, then you'll probably wanna like cut up these leaves, but I'm just tearing straight basil leaves right into the mix because I can't think of another better herb to throw in here. If you wanna throw parsley, throw parsley. If you wanna do basil, do basil or um, mint would be really good. Lastly is the green, but this isn't a green salad. We're not making it overly green. You don't need a ton of arugula. You just need about a cup of it just to add some green, some freshness, and like you don't have to overdress arugula either. Like kale, if you're making a kale salad, you need a, like a heavy dressing, a really good hearty dressing, but I have barely really any residual liquids going on right now because this is super freshly made as it sits more liquids will develop. Arugula is so delicate, so it doesn't need a super really heavy dressing, and you don't need a lot of it. You'll see a lot in the Mediterranean when they use arugula, it's kind of just like to top on a sandwich or to top on top of a pizza. Like they don't have just arugula salads, like here in America. And you can really use this kind of salad to th use up whatever you have in the fridge. Any type of tomatoes, even if some like you have some peaches, that'd be delicious. I was gonna throw in some ricotta salata into this recipe. So I tried so hard not to put any cheese in this, but I was tempted to put cheese in the salad, trust me. This is beautiful, this is stunning. This can last two to three days in the fridge. It gets better and better and better. And I'm a crunch queen, so I can eat this now. It's technically supposed to sit for like two to three hours, so that bread softens and the flavors marry. So this salad here is for all the people on August 12th who want to make pumpkin spice lattes. To that I say, we're still in summer. Oh my gosh. Mm, mm. Oh my gosh. And the super juicy tomatoes and the sweet corn, bitter arugula. And it's the best thing ever. It's so good. Eat your greens, they're incredible. So much flavor in the salad. I'm gonna finish the salad and then take off this belt because <laughs> my stomach is so full. <laughs> and I think that means I'm also going to end the video here. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. I truly, truly hope you enjoyed. I hope you got some kind of inspiration out of this, um, something hopefully to try, whether it's one recipe, one ingredient, one idea, one thing to take away from the Mediterranean lifestyle. Please, please, please give it a thumbs up. And if you aren't already, please subscribe because I cannot wait, of course, to eventually come out with fall recipes when the fall comes, but also continue coming out with summer recipes because summer is still upon us and I'm not in any rush to end it. And please leave a comment on what recipe videos you would like to see. I absolutely love that I got to make a recipe video off of a question referring to getting more greens in, different ways to eat greens. But if you have any questions on whether it's an ingredient or a style of cooking or just anything in general, I am here, I want to, to talk to you guys. I'm always in the comments. I love talking to you guys so, so much. I am so, 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 so grateful for you and your support and I just cannot thank you enough. So until next time, I hope you create a very, very zestful day. Ciao.